Hello everybody and welcome back to Lone Oak Farm. So in this episode we're going to be buying a brand new common harvester. This is something which we've been wanting to do, or at least I've been wanting to do, for a few episodes now. The money is almost available, at least it will be in uh, probably about 5 or 10 minutes time. Because we have a great demand on the wool, which was mentioned at the end of the previous episode. So that's going to really help us actually afford uh, the duplicated version of this combine. It's going to be exactly the same the S680, at least I think it is, unless of course we do struggle for money, um, in which case we could go for something just slightly smaller, but ideally we're going to have two exactly the same. It might seem a bit boring to have two the same, but we've just had such good luck with this one, and the working width is really impressive too, uh, so there's no reason really why we wouldn't have uh, another one. I've just realised that actually looks really good. Uh, you've got the, the dirt only at the bottom of the extinguisher, probably from the wheels or something, or just the dust generally coming up here. I like that, it's a, it's a good feature. It's so simple, but it's something which I've just noticed. It's something which is um, just one of those things which you really think, hmm, that's well done. Anyway, enough of looking at a fire extinguisher. Let's move on. What we need to do is get the pickup truck. We've got the big red pickup truck, and we're going to obviously use the, the gooseneck trailer to move these pallets of wool. I'm just wondering, maybe we should buy the other one as well. The trailer which allows you to basically strap it on, strap anything with um, straps. <laughs> How did I forget that word? Um, yeah, so I think we probably should do. I think it would be good, because uh, then at least we're not going to lose any of our load on the road. There really is nothing wrong with the trailer we have here, and it actually does hold things on pretty well. It's just, um, yeah, because you can't physically strap, it just might look a bit wrong, transporting the pallets on the road without a strap. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's not very expensive, and we can definitely afford another trailer, despite having to buy a combine too. The issue is, where did I put the pickup? Did I put it in here? No, I didn't. Hmm. Jump cut. Here we are. Okay, so let's just park in one of these parking spaces, just so we're not in the way of the uh, spawn point, and we'll speak to somebody here. That's the parts department. Right. So in uh, baling technology, there is this trailer just here, and this will allow us to strap things on. So it's twelve thousand pounds, twelve thousand dollars. It looks exactly the same, but it should be super useful for transporting bales and pallets, and anything uh, really which isn't on wheels, because the other one is more of a transporter, I think. At least that is from what I can tell. And there we go. And up to the sheep farm, which is actually only just up the road here, not very far at all. No. Sorry folks, I didn't even hit you. I did not hit you. The Manny 2 will already be up here, so all we'll have to do is just get the pallets out of the shed, obviously load it up, strap them on, and then drive over to the cell point, which is only over there. I've just seen a bale. There is a bale on the corner. How weird. Uh, so, yes, once this is done, we should have probably over $100,000 more than what we have now. In fact, yes, we have two more full pallets there. <laughs> it's brilliant. They just keep stacking up. Uh, so yeah, loads and loads of money is going to be coming in very soon. We have the spike on here currently, so we'll just take that off. I'll pull forward. And yeah, the pallet fork I did drop off just there. For those wanting the survival series, it is hopefully going to be returning tomorrow. That is my plan. It does take a while to make, and uh, I can't always stick to the day I say, but yeah, if all goes to plan, tomorrow is survival day. It seems to be still going fairly strong. Uh, hopefully the storyline is still good. Seems to be, because the videos do tend to get quite a, a reasonable rating. I do tend to base how well a video has performed on the likes and dislike ratio, which is um, pretty obvious, really. I mean, that's what they're there for, although it can get abused. 
but generally you get a pretty good idea of if it's a good video or not. I don't know if anybody's ever used Social Blade before, but whenever I go on there, if you click on user videos, you can see uh, exactly what rating a video has in percentage, and they change colour. The percentage changes colour depending on the uh, quality of the video. So anything less than 95% is like a green colour, anything over 95% uh, light, that is, is a blue colour. So the way I tend to base my videos on if they've done well or not is if it's green, they've not done too well, so less than 95%, although that is still pretty good, that means that only 5% have disliked. Um, yeah, I, I always like to stay within the blue. I'm not like completely obsessed with it, it's just, it's a good way of me sort of working out if I'm doing good videos or not. And whenever I start talking about video ratings, I either get tons of likes or tons of dislikes. So if you're one of those people who likes to like, then uh, yeah, please feel free to drop one down below. Although, if you're gonna base it on my stacking, I do feel a few dislikes coming this way. There. At least it didn't fall off. It could have been much worse. Okay, <laughs> that didn't go well. Um, if you look at it, at least the first half of it, it looks alright, but I've uh, obviously lost one and um, I'm going to have to move to get it back on. So let me just, yeah, uh, maybe we should go forwards. It's some crazy stacking. It was going alright to begin with, but then I, I just totally lost it for some reason. Um, yes, yeah, so that needs to be picked up and put on the back. But, yeah, as long as it gets to the sell point, it isn't really a, an issue, what it looks like. I was getting a few people yesterday saying, why was the video so short? Uh, yeah, yesterday I wasn't really feeling great, so I couldn't really uh, produce much of a video, unfortunately. I'll try and make it longer today if I can do. The other reason, though was because I did a few time lapses. When you do time lapses, it really does eat up the uh, the video length. Like, you can start off with an unedited uned uh, load of files of the video at something like 50 minutes or an hour, and then as soon as you speed those clips up, you could be down to 19 minutes, like I was, in no time at all. So, yeah, even if you feel like you've been playing for a while, when you come to edit, it can really uh, decrease, and then the video is pretty short. But, yep, yeah, hopefully today it will be longer. I'm stuck. There we go. Good. I might have actually nudged that. I'm not too sure. It doesn't really matter, though, because we can always just move it later. Basically, in the next load, next time we uh, come to solve some. Or if we come to move some out of the way. So there we go. We have our pile of wool. And it might not look it, but I would say we do have $150,000 here. It's crazy money, it really is, but without it, we can't really buy the machinery that we want to. Um, it's actually quite funny, because actually somebody mentioned this in the previous episode, or two episodes ago. The silage in FS15 was what was the crazy money. It was super money, uh, where you could make an absolute fortune from just a really small amount. Whereas in 17, the wool is the, the super money maker, and yeah, it's, it really is worth an absolute fortune. It's strange though, because I always get told whenever I start saying the wool is worth a fortune, that in real life, wool isn't really worth much at all. So that is quite interesting. I wonder what will be the money maker in 19. Probably, uh, what would it be? We've got the new crop type of cotton, so that, that may well be the, uh, the money maker. Or it could be the oats. You never know. Or it could just be 
the wool again, or the silage, <laughs> who knows, it could be absolutely anything, but there's usually one crop in particular which makes a lot of money. Come on car, you're slowing me down. We've got a good run up to the hill. It's certainly a good load. And we can transport it faster than uh, 26 miles per hour, providing we're not stuck behind a car. So here goes, into the cell point. This will take a while, but if we can keep it all in the uh, the trigger, from start to finish, we'll see exactly how much we've made. And it really should be quite a uh, considerable amount. I'm going to go with 150,000. What do you think? Okay, I might have been a bit off. Um, oh, it fell over. I think we're in the 200,000 region here. I think we are. Are we going to hit 500? I think we are, yep. 500,000. So we made from this... 241,276 dollars. Oh, that is a serious amount of money. I am aware of it being set to pounds, that's why the pound sign is there, but yes, it is uh, It's dollars because we're on Lone Oak Farm. Anyway, let's head back to the store. We'll buy our combine harvester, and we need to start the harvesting. We have at least two very large fields to harvest, both of which are canola, and um, yeah, I really want to get it done. It's going to be such a massive harvest. Before we start to do it properly, like when we really get into it, I will have updated the map. I still haven't done it. I keep forgetting. But yeah, we, we're probably going to put it into uh, storage, and we can't have more than 100,000 litres in storage with the current version, which I have. But I've been told, and I'm pretty sure it does say on ModHub, that it's been increased. So yeah, I need to update probably between this episode and the next one. And yeah, I'm 100% sure, definitely 100% sure that you can update the map without changing the save game, which is good. Right. Time to buy a combine harvester. This store really does do very well out of us. We are spending a fortune with them. Right. Harvesters. Um, yeah, so I think it's... Which one do we have? This one here. 680. We could go for a bigger one, actually. The 690. Uh, we can afford it. We can do. What can it do, though, that the other one can't? It might be a larger grain tank. Hmm. I don't know. I think we'll go for the 690 for variety. And we might go for a flotation, see what it looks like, instead of the jewels. And unless it is jewels as well, I'm not too sure. Extended pipe, standard pipe, I think we go for extended, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that, but yeah, we'll go for extended. Um, yes, we need that. No, we don't need that. I, we actually are big enough now to have numbers, so we could go for number two. We could put number one on the other one. Static and foldable. Foldable, might as well. So that's a, a good chunk of money, which we've just spent. Time for the header. Let's go on here. It is the 635R. That's 50,000, and we need the header trailer, which is also going to be, uh, what is it, about 25,000, I think? It's quite a bit of money. Hmm. That's not for this. Oh, it is. It is for this. 8,000. That's fairly reasonable. Okay, it's number two. Number two. We definitely need to put a decal on the other one then, saying number one. It's our fleet. We may well go to number three eventually. Oh, our extra long pipe is uh, just poking through the dealership wall. It's certainly a beast of a machine. We might actually need to tow the header trailer with the pickup. I don't know. We can tow with this. It's just 
it's going to be massive for these roads because the roads are big but actually some of the roads we go on around the back are quite small fairly narrow that should do it I would hope I'll try it I'll try and tow it but I don't know we may need to have some assistance later although actually just thinking about it the field we're going to go to first isn't in uh, the direction of the farm it is further over so we could turn right out of here yes we will do so I'll turn the pickups engine off we'll park it here for the time being we've spent plenty of money so they can't give us a parking fine and uh, yeah let's just turn right they wouldn't even be authorized to give us a parking fine beacons beacons are definitely required you'll have to wait there car we have to wait for you being slow on the road Ooh. oh yeah the steps do they fold in I know the steps fold in when you switch the engine off and uh, get out, but as for travelling, I don't know. That is quite a beast. Blimey, that is uh, huge. Ah, car, although it seems to be waiting for us. Thank you so much. That's going to make it so much easier for us, instead of just barging past. Although there is still a pole just there. Let's just see. Thank you, folks. You've just gone into the back of him, you know. Good driving. This one's seen as in the, the rearview mirror and has just frozen with fright. Yes, we are the king of the road. <gasps> Why are they not pulling over for us? Wow, I've never seen that happen before. Anyway, here we are. This is the field which was actually the sugar beet field before. We've now put the canola in here and it should be able to produce a lot of money for us. First things first, let's take the header trader off, put the header on both of them and then we're going to take a few headlands off just so we can put them on a worker and I can take over um, with the, uh, the carting. Because, uh, oh no, 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 what are you doing? Well, you've maybe put my lights on, although that is very impressive. And, uh, yes, we don't need to be in too much of a rush with the carting, since it is canola, and it's not going to fill up the combines very quickly. The only issue I do see is, chances are both will be full at the same time, so keeping up both of them might be just slightly more difficult than if it was uh, only one harvester on the go, but it isn't going to be too difficult. It's not going to be a big problem. I'm not concerned. Okay, so that is pretty much ready to go. I'll just get the other halves to set up, and then we'll do a follow me course, and we'll go around twice, taking four headlands off. And we're off. We might have to adjust the follow me course just slightly. I can do it from here though, so it's not a problem. The lights are very impressive on these things. I do like that. Having said that, I do like the entire machine. I think they're very good. Technically, uh, harvester number one should be in front, but again, it doesn't really matter. It's just, I know that some people might pick up on it. But it isn't really numbered for that reason. I think it's more sort of just to uh, keep track of the fleet, the servicing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it seems to be perfect. Brilliant. So let's just go around, like I say, twice. We might have to unload uh, before we can complete two laps but we'll just keep going until we need to unload really bring the truck up after that they're going to be on a worker one on each side of the field
Luckily the lorry is already very close because we actually used it at the end of the previous episode to go and sell some wheat. So it was only at the storage back there, over at the sell point. So I've actually taken off just two headlands. The reason for this is because we just didn't really need to do the rest and the combines are full. I've taken three off down the bottom so they don't hit the fence but other than that it's, it's ready to go. They're ready to just start work. So we'll do a bit today. We'll complete it tomorrow, or the day after, because yeah, it's going to be survival tomorrow, but uh, yes. Next episode, we'll complete all of this and move on to the next field, which is going to be the field which we turned from a grass field to an arable field, field 44. So lots to do. This combine is for the far side, because uh, yeah, obviously it's uh, going to be empty. The org would be on the incorrect side for the other combine if it was going to go back over here so this is going to work the best I hope just set this off and leave it to it ok so it's very tricky to judge where the best place is to start it but hopefully that's going to be alright this one is um 78% full, so nowhere near as full. Even so, over 11,000 litres. In fact, because it isn't totally full, I will set it off on a worker here. Unload on the move. In fact, uh, yeah, as well, I'm fairly sure that the brakes on this combine aren't as good as they were, <laughs> for some reason. There is something I do need to mention, actually. And that is the Satex side panel which I have. I have got the the first one which I've ever had. It's the only one I've ever had. And um, it is starting to play up. Only today, though. Today is the first time it's done it. Basically, when I was doing the wool stacking, the wool pallets, it kept uh, not tilting the... Uh, the times, it was extending the boom instead. And I know it's not just a, an incorrect setting because uh, it's, it's sticking. If you punch it with your fist, it fixes it. So that's really weird. Having said this though, my Satex side panel must have around a thousand gameplay hours on it. The reason why I know this is because I had it for about a year for FS15 and I've played 800, over 800 hours, 850 hours of uh, 17, so actually more than a thousand gameplay hours. It's not being used continually, but even so, that's quite a bit of use. In fact, if I was to really push it, I would say it's done up to 1500 hours use, but it's more like a thousand to 1200. How's the combine doing? Good. Getting on well. And that is empty. So like I say, we'll leave them to it. I wonder what the price is like at the moment. Uh, canola. Mm, it's going down. It's it's good. It's not terrible, that's for sure. But it would be nice to hold on to it until there is a great demand, because it is still worth a, an awful lot, this crop. Looking good. Munching through the field in no time. My plan is to unload the left-hand side combine on the way down, and then that one on the right on the way up. The one on the right will have more in it though, because obviously it's been going for longer and it's going to do an extra, uh, an entire length of the field more than the, uh, the one on the left here. So, yep, it's going to be uh, pretty full, but it should be able to do it. Hopefully. It's actually turned out to be perfect. It has filled up to the top, but it's facing the correct way. I was a bit worried it wasn't going to make it then, but yeah, it's good. So. Once these two are unloaded, we'll leave it there. There's barely anything left to do already. It's really got through it quickly. And, yeah, we'll just complete that next time and start the next field. Hopefully start and finish the next field. So we'll have absolutely loads of canola in storage, ready to sell when the price is very good. It's almost done? Yep. Okay. Now for this one, which is 100% full. It's a massive amount. There we go. We are about 75% full. 10% left in the combine. 
so it's all fit perfectly. Okay, so we're going to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.